Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mako, and this is our 17th episode of our second story in Wilder Myth. We just completed chapter two, so we're going to go ahead and go through that chapter interlude and get on into chapter three. Uh, it is only a three chapter story, so it'll be our final chapter. Oh, nice. We lost quite a bit there. Wonderful. During the years of peace, Dwargan noticed that the theater at Leaping Field had fallen into disrepair during all the conflict. So he passed a summer helping to rebuild it. Fletchikwan Smelter offered to take discarded Dwarven armor and Mothragi parts, melting them down, reforging them to be used against their former masters. When Linyan came down with a case of thistle folk, Lusla uh, Lusalia would come by to feed the pigs and handle the soup pot. How are your joints? Better? I mean, he's missing a few joints because he's got that bone arm now, but you know. Thess found trees were a better audience for her long-winded tales than the star staring drunks in town. She often went about on idle days planting more. Unconvinced that the threat was gone for good, Lusalia continued to train relentlessly. We are going to say he ain't losing his leg on this one. We want her to have that bow. Minus 0.2 health, plus 6 warding for another crow leg. Yeah, sure, Nargoloff can have that. He's kind of a beast man as it is, you know. So... We want to look into this. Take 10 of our 18 ingots, one heartwood, one fabric, and half of our spell threads. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and keep him nice and strong. Onion. Yeah. We'll craft you a tier three wand for just the one spell point. Or the one legacy. You might just have to keep that axe. Let's take a look at the armors. He's already in tier two. Okay. Uh... Two legacy points? Yeah. Narbloth. We'll give that to three. Six on that one. Uh, yeah, I think that pretty much is going to be it. Okay. <clears throat> the shadows where I crouched were lit as by lightning. Again, again, and again. Error hurled round like I'd never felt. I understood, of course. The fulminations flew from my own forge. Flint's body was gone. His prime and petty essences smelted from him. We're being hammered into something new. 
I once made harrowing blades. Edges to sever unwelcome spirits from the flesh they accompanied, uh, occupied. But that day, my forge became an evil place. My life's work of failure. I didn't go any further than I'd come. I crept up a tunnel. I'd whistled down 10,000 times and tried to disappear. I hope never to see the Rot Queen again. But I know, somehow, in my trembling heart, that I will. Does it in there? I see what you mean. That sounds like the forge hall I dreamed of. Journal belonged to someone called Mulva Langwasp. It's old. Feel this cover. It's like grasping a crooked fish. It wants to slip out of its skin. Was uh, it here in the library? Mulva Langwasp? You need to know where that book came from? I found it just last winter, traveling and poking into caves. It's, I mean, it's pretty far. It's always far. Spurred by bad fall dreaming, they embarked in a couple days to find the place Lusalia speaks of. They made wise and random haste. It's not their first deathly omen. Already unseen perils are fuming from the grasps of the earth. Darkness advances. All monster groups will draw an extra two cards in every battle. Oh. Okay, so we have... 3D, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 locales. And the opportunity for a new member down here. Alright, let's go. Okay, Dwarglin receives an opportunity. And the next thing you know, the homunculus has lost track of time. And she's like, oh nuts, I've got a book club to get to. Hold these trails for me. He doesn't seem amused. You're a cotton head Pollock. Lusalia, how goes it? You old bucket of nails? Eh, yeah, fine, I guess. Anyway, wanted to find you because look, any idea what this note means? Who blinks first? Who gave you that? Who gave this to you? No one, or I mean, no one I saw. It was stuck to your door. Your name on it. I figured I'd bring it to you. Map, too. A map? Yes, a map. Here, you take it. It's not meant for me. And there he goes. I mean, honestly. Yeah, it seems about right. Let's see here. Who to pick? Lelisa. She was from my first campaign. They were in the same campaign together. <laughs> Several, actually, I think. I should warn you, most people think they know how they'd react to battle, but really, they have no idea. Oh, I think I've got a pretty good idea. Yeah, of course you do. Okay, so we've arrived up here. So this lady used to pick on you, this... Flynnry? What's the deal with that? Well, I used to give as much as I got, to be honest. Not that I enjoyed it. <clears throat> okay. 
what it, it was, we had this game we would play to challenge each other. A blinking game. Doesn't sound inherently vicious. What kind of rules did you have? What? There weren't any rules? Well, the point was about you're put in a situation and whoever blinks first loses. So that meant just going further and further until one of you backed down, right? Basically. So something happened. What was it? Oh, um, well, the last time it happened, I ended up winning, but something went wrong. I didn't mean for Flynn to get hurt quite so badly, and... Wait, this is horrifying. Well, yeah. I'm not always good at understanding where lines are drawn, and so... Anyway, I haven't seen her or heard her from her since that time. Zalia? Are you serious right now? And this is what I signed on for. So I'm Dwarlin. My friend and I decided abusing each other would be hilarious. Oh, oops. Turns out it sucks to get randomly maimed for no reason. Oh, what's that? She wants revenge. Good luck to her. See what she does when I walk straight into her trap. Poor Dwarlin. Did I miss anything? How about the part where I didn't ask you to come with me? Missalia. Missalia's foot has pressed a concealed trigger. Removing it will likely spring a hidden trap. Any shift of weight, any movement might release it. Mm. Mm. This is kind of what Dwarglin would do, though. Uh, I think we'll go with number one. With all the speed and strength he can muster, Dwarglin throw charges to throw Lusali a clear. A bolt flies from a concealed mechanism in the nearby stump. It strikes him in the face. Dwarglin! Just get ready. There's always more wrinkle. Sure enough. Ah, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna fight some bone boys. Ah, there he is. This probably won't take very long. Maybe a little bit longer than expected. There's the other one. Put you in Guardian. Oh. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Interfuse here and fire leash. There we go. Nice. Uh, I think Dwarglin kind of got this one. Oh, yeah. She's gonna wreck him. Nice. Ooh, we saw I got a lever. Ugh, level. Um. Honestly, upgrading Paladin is more important. Who will retire at the end of this chapter, but it's the end of the story at the end of this chapter anyways, so... By nightfall, Dwarglin's eyes patched. The fire blazes as he absently adds more branches. I just did one more sweep of the area. Hmm, well, thanks for making sure she wouldn't have struck stuck around. I know you said that. I'm just being sure. Alright. Good. Look, I don't know what comes next. Lynn and I 
We had our own kind of honor. Justice. So perhaps this was it. It seems like a big question to live with. I'm used to it. But then I'm enough harm to know some's coming back to me. Am I supposed to start taking you seriously now? Well, the eye pouch definitely helps, right? Somehow, not really. The hill climbing fire pours its heat into the night sky. Later they sleep. Neither will ever hear from Flynn Rye again. Okay. One, two, four, five, six, and seven. I believe that is max level. Actually. How many LP do I have? Yeah, let's get Battle Dance. We got these three up here. We're going to have three down here. Um, yeah, let's scout with those three. Should work out. Two parties to kind of sweep the area. Yep. Let's go. And we will, of course, do everything we can. But this is where we're going to go ahead and end the episode. Thank you all for joining us today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.